these are usually just like good conversations. We just kind of roll into them and then they work the editing. Magic. Editing. Gotcha. Hey, Josh, thanks for uh, hosting us here in the cabin lab, so-called cabin lab. What does cabin stand for? That's putting you on the spot right away. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, so it's cognitive, affective, behavioral, integrative neuroscience. Okay. All right. See, I'm no stranger to this world, and so I totally know how you just twist words around in order to create a cool like acronym, you yeah. know, so cabin works. But So how long have you been working in the lab? And, and I mean, how did you find out about this? As a student, to be working in this setting is pretty amazing. So how did you find out about it? I've been involved for about a year and a half. Okay. So last year was my first year. And I actually found out, uh, it was actually kind of funny. Um, it was a school... Uh, like a college fair all right and um, and I was really interested in northern so I looked more into it and I happened to stumble upon uh, uh, like the different psychology labs and cabin was like it was like listing everything that I wanted to study at the fair uh, no, it was further when I did my own okay research, okay okay so, but it was yeah, easy yeah. to find okay because I think that's one of the big selling points for Northern. And there are a lot of reasons a student might come here, but I think, um, you know, I talk to prospective students and parents all the time about how one of the neat things is that more or less, you know, upon arrival here, you can start engaging with things like undergraduate research. And I think psychological sciences is, is, like what is maybe at the heart of that for Northern. There's so much that happens here, but that was the case for you. Yeah, yeah. it certainly was. All right. Okay. So give me kind of like, biggest highlight of working in the lab and then you and I were chatting just a second ago there's also some I mean you have to deal with real world troubles like getting yeah. a new grant up and running but highlight and then maybe kind of yeah this is something I didn't know is going to be kind of tough about working in the lab okay yeah um I would say a highlight is going to conferences mm. um so once you get involved enough and you contribute yeah. to a project you get to go to a conference and tell people about it. Coolest conference location that you've gone to? What would, what would it be? Ooh, uh, New Orleans. Be a good yeah. one. Yeah. It's fantastic. And then um, the second part was the biggest challenge that you had. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not all fun and games, right? Yeah, I mean, hard no, work goes into making these things go. So, I mean, what what is something that you'd say, hey, if you're a student thinking about getting involved at this level and you're involved at a high level, here's what you should also know about what you have to put in or what you have to put up with. You know? So what are some of the things you had to work through? Yeah, uh, I could I could use a, a real world example right now. I think now, those are the best. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, our amplifiers for our uh, EEG caps, so that's what allows us to um, actually plug it in okay. and actually pull it the apart. The caps are those crazy looking net things that you put on your yes. head. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. And these plug in, the amplifiers like plug into those. And, yep, yeah. they plug into the amplifiers and then um, we'll see the brain activity on our side of the Okay. Um, yeah, and so those broke down immediately and it was or one was not working and then one was making a weird noise. So we had to send it back to uh, the, uh, the uh, company. And there's no cool story about that. It's not like some brilliant person sat down and it just like blew out the circuits on the amplifiers or something. They just didn't no, work. I yeah. wish. Yeah, yeah that'd that would be, be kind of a good story. That'd yeah, be okay. more, more fun to talk yeah. about. But, okay. Um, I'm really showing off my scientific acumen right here. <laughs> the types of questions I'm asking. <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about the grant, and then, I don't know, uh, they are kind of funny looking, but it might be neat to dig out one of those caps and sort of see what happens, how, how the magic works. Yeah, I think it was our third year trying, so we failed, I think, two. Okay. I wouldn't say failed, but it was um, a step in the right direction. I'll yeah, say. good and lesson there. It doesn't always happen right away. Yeah. Right? You gotta like try so, and figure out how to, yeah, okay. Uh, a group of, um, faculty members mm -hmm. in the psych department kind of came together. Professor and Carlson, yeah, right in bank. Yeah. Carlson, Dr. Fong, um, Dr. Tables, uh, oh, yeah. Forrest, Forrest and, and Corey, yeah. and then Dr. Barch. Okay, John Barch, yeah. Um, so they, they got all together. They applied for the grant. We have a list of studies that we want to yeah. run, and if you um, give us this money, yeah. uh, we can run that and hopefully do some Really good, good contribute to science so 
I'm really proud of it. I think that uh, we focus a lot on undergraduate instruction at Northern. You know, I, I think we talk a lot about the natural setting and sort of what it means to be a student here and explore this place. We probably don't talk enough about how much amazing research happens on this campus. I mean, major shout out to our faculty and all the students who assist our faculty because we have world-class faculty on this campus I mean, every single day doing work in areas like this, but across all the disciplines. So right. you're kind of a good case study of a student who's taking advantage of all that expertise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let, are we, are, am I allowed to, you know, mess around with one of those things? I won't mess it up, but mess oh, around with one of those. Oh, um, yeah, sure, if you okay. want to take a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. take a look, yeah. No, I, I don't, yeah, let's, I'm curious. Since they also look like they could be mops. <laughs> That's the first time yeah, I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Okay. okay so tell so, them, walk me through the parts really quickly. And we don't have to, um, unless um, one of our videographers wants to try them on, I think we're probably okay without that. So yeah, these good. are... Yeah? No. <laughs> these are uh, all electrodes. So mm -hmm. each of these are recording electrodes. So it'll pick up brain activity. Um, electrical brain activity. Um, go here you can kind of see if you were to put it on uh, these would be like where the ears go okay and this would like rest on your uh, yeah like the nose bridge area I've seen pictures of it yeah um, it's interesting yeah they're kind of looking they're yeah. kind of freaky looking yeah I think <laughs> I agree so they get readings off it and then what happens so this is kind of push you into like the nature of the projects or the experiments I guess themselves some of the things I've heard about so you got that on, right, and it's tracking electrical activity in your brain, and then what you're exposed to kind of different stimuli. So I know one of the things, it, and maybe some of the students watching would be interested in this, like I, I, you hear a lot about climate and anxiety, and right. so is the, is the subject kind of presented with different sti like stimuli that might do something like portray climate change or climate trauma, and then you're tracking what happens in the brain? Yeah, I'm actually really glad you asked me about that because I get to talk about one of my projects. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. the projects that I'm involved in. So, we would expose like participants to different kinds of images, climate change images. So, like a positive image, mm -hmm. and then like a neutral, and then a negative. They're somewhat arbitrary. Yeah. I mean, something negative can be positive to someone. It's but yeah, like a 50 degree day in February. <laughs> yeah, on some I mean, level that's positive, sure. right? It's nice yeah, outside, yeah. but on another another deeper level, it's kind of you know kind of traumatic. You know what the heck is going on? Yeah, you know, like yeah. Eight above a record high or something. So I I know what you mean it's subjective. <laughs> yeah. But then you track so, what happens. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then we would find how um, different brain, if there there are different neural signatures for different kinds of images. Okay. So in our study, we found that the negative images receive um, preferential processing uh, in the early and later stages of like, we can see that in like the brain activity. That's because the brain wants to keep us alive, yeah? yeah right, yeah, like, so if it's yeah, yeah. or scary, that goes to the front of the line. Yeah, yeah so, okay. um, yeah, wow, you really you really do know I have stuff. no idea, so, it's, all, it's all in the show notes. Yeah, so we'll typically, yeah. Um, We'll typically pay attention to things that keep us alive or signal possible mm -hmm. reward or if it's dangerous, well, we should probably be paying attention to that. And so climate change is a little bit newer. We're still trying to figure sure. it out. But um, the reason to do this is to see what kinds of information grabs sure. each other, our, our attention. And you can imagine this can be especially important when we try to communicate about Absolutely. climate change and I'm trying to bring about change, see what people pay attention to yep. so that we can use that to um, communicate. So I'm, I'm a, a, a kind of personal example there. And then I'm going to end with two other, two other quick ones for you. But a uh, personal example, and it's kind of funny, but actually it illustrates that case. So I'm a, I'm a husband and a dad. All right. So I know, you know, there's a, we live in kind of house with a bunch of different rooms. So when my wife, Kristen, would be like, Brock! Right? I mean, like immediately, I know I've got to pay attention to that, right? Because yeah, I know yeah, it's something yeah. serious. You know, she was helping. And then I was just talking to, to my girls about this. They can be a little bit whiny. I love you guys. You're amazing. Francis and Leona. You 
watch this down there. But when they get whiny or they kind of pretend like, you know, oh, something really awful is going on, even if it's not, like, guys, you got to not do that. Because for mom and dad, we're hardwired to respond to that. It goes right to the front of my queue. And I'm like, okay, I'm, and most of the time, it's, you know, they need just a little bit more milk on their cereal or something like that. But, <laughs> but I think about that a lot because it is, it's about what it triggers in the brain. And, and that is all about survival and like protecting the people that we love. And I imagine the same thing is true for climate. Something that I think we try to do a lot at Northern. You know, we're investing a lot in sustainability programming. We have really strong academic programs around the climate uh, and climate study. But for students, and I think for a lot of our employees, one of the best ways to get at the anxiety is to take action and, and feel like you have some avenue to make a difference, like to get involved. And so I wonder if that would track changes in the electrical signals if you were presented with the image, but then after that, it's like, do you choose to join this community organization that is, you know, looking at alternative, you know, energy sources and see if that adjusts the electrical activity. And it'd be kind of an interesting add-on to the, to the experiment. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of funny you say that because um, that's something that we've been trying to do okay. in the lab or have thought about. Um, like at the end of the experiment and say, would you like to, mm. would you like to donate to this or would you like to form an organization yeah. where you can combat these harmful things? You yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, I'm really glad you brought that. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay, last one for me, and then you can do like some lightning round on me or somebody ask me anything. But you're a McNair scholar. I am. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how you found out about the program and. I mean, my guess is that it may be, you know, something that's really positively impacted your time at, at Northern and it probably affected your long term plans as well. But anything about the McNair Scholars Program? I'm really proud that we have that. Experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say probably joining McNair is probably the, the most impactful and yeah. probably life, I would say life changing moment for me. Um, it made me realize that research is for everyone and for everyone that is interested and it's not only for those that um, come from privileged backgrounds and um you know going through the program it made me see it firsthand i mean i got to i got to do my own project i mean that's huge for me you know? really and it's gonna help with grad school phd programs yeah. and you know starting your own lab someday i can only say good things about it good. they personally make fun trips to conferences mm -hmm. and any membership fees and you, when you apply to um, like PhD programs they'll pay the application oh fee my gosh, yeah. and so it's such a huge like such a big uh, resource for students. Can you join after you're at Northern or do you come into Northern as a McNair Scholar? The, I think how it works is you're you apply when you're soft okay. in your undergrad as so. So I don't know how these things work, these videos, but maybe we put some information down there for students who think, hey, that might be me. And, and they can yeah. explore and yeah. figure out if they're, yeah. if they're uh, able to join. Josh, thanks a lot. Congrats on all the good work. Yeah, can't wait to see what's next for you. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thanks.